A report uh, by the UN has shown uh, that it's getting worse than ever. It's actually not getting better. The gap between the ultra rich and the rest of us, the gap between the ultra rich and the people who work for the ultra rich is even larger now than it ever was. And it's continuing to grow. So um, this was uh, in Time Magazine. Uh, also, this is, this is a report by the UN. Billionaires made so much money last year, they could end extreme poverty seven times. <laughs> the global economy created a record number of billionaires last year, exacerbating inequality amid a weakening of workers' rights and a corporate push to maximize shareholders' returns, charity organization Oxfam International said in a new report. The world now has 2,043 billionaires, a record number of billionaires last year, after a new one emerged every two days last year. The nonprofit organization said in a report published Monday, the group of mostly men saw its wealth surge by 762 billion which is enough money to end extreme poverty seven times over, according to Oxfam. Hmm. I don't see them donating their billions, though. Do you? The world now, I'm sorry, according to separate data compiled by Bloomberg, the top 500 billionaires net worth grew 24% to $5.38 trillion in 2017, while the world's richest person, Amazon.com's Jeff Bezos, saw a gain of $33.7 billion. The billionaire boom is not a uh, sign of thriving economy, but a symptom of a failing economic system, said Winnie Bayi Mayan Yama. I apologize always for mispronouncing names executive director of Oxfam International. The people who make our clothes, assemble our phones, and grow our food are being exploited. Oxfam published the report as global leaders, chief executives, and bankers arrive in Davos, Switzerland for the World Economic Forum's annual meeting. Oxfam uh, called our government to limit shareholders and executive returns while ensuring workers receive a living wage. That would be nice, wouldn't it? But that's not what's happening. People are ready for a change. They want to limit, uh, want a limit on the power and wealth, wealth which sits at the hands of so few. So this brings me to Bernie Sanders' tweet. <sighs> you know what Amazon paid in federal income taxes last year, Bernie tweets? Zero. So let's talk about Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos, 12 billion, uh, this is from fast.com, and the headline is, Jeff Bezos made 12 million times the median average Amazon employee in 2017. And in The Intercept last year, uh, Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos' net worth ballooned to 35.1 billion. Also last year, the median Amazon employee made 28 thousand do the math bezos made 1.2 million times his typical employee in 2017 and amazon is not paying taxes so the gap between bezos and his workers also highlights the company's uh, dependence on the army of low-paid workers who fulfill online orders across dozens of distribution centers while many employees at its Seattle headquarters make upwards of $100,000 a year, the bulk of Amazon workers alongside robots at these warehouses across the United States do not. And according to various analyses, um, they are often paid below average wages, below a living wage. Uh, reported on Thursday, the one in three Amazon warehouse employees in Arizona depend on food stamps or supplemental nutrition assistance program called SNAP. 
Um, also, in Pennsylvania and Ohio, figures appear to be that one in 10 uh, needed food stamps, although they work full time. Overall, and five states that responded to the public records request for a list of their top employees, um, Amazon cracked the top 20 in four. So among all the, the companies where this man is making more than anyone else, um, they're not paying any taxes. They're also not giving their employees a living wage and their employees have to collect food stamps and these are full-time employees. So this has to change. This, how is this even allowed to happen? But that's what happens when you have a government that is run by corrupt politicians who are doing the same thing. They're taking money, they're padding their pockets at the expense of working class America. So of course this is gonna be happening with the billionaires and trillionaires because our politicians are doing the same thing. And that's why the 2018 and the 2020 elections are so important and that we keep raising our voice and sharing that information so that we can finally change things in this country. And you know, it's showing that they're actually getting worse. And this is a worldwide problem. So uh, another study by the University of California Center of Labor Research and Education shows that low wages are forcing working families to rely on more than $150 billion in public assistance. So Stephen Greenhouse says, uh, of the Labor Research and Education Center says, there's a narrative that everyone who receives public assistance isn't working, but a study out of Berkeley found that three quarters of the money nationwide spent on public assistance, whether food stamps, Medicaid, goes to families who are working and oftentimes have more than one person in the family who are working. It further says, and this is where the corruption is, <laughs> it's just blaring and why don't we hear about this in the corporate media? The study found that this is an indirect subsidy to companies like Wendy's, Burger King, McDonald's, Taco Bell, Walmart, Target. So should taxpayers be subsidizing Walmart and McDonald's? Uh, should they be subsidizing Walmart and McDonald's? A report from the American for Tax Fairness shows Walmart is the beneficiary of billions of dollars per year in financial subsidi subsidi subsidies. The report estimates that Walmart and the Walton family, which co-founded the company and still owns a majority share, collectively profited from nearly $7.8 billion per year in federal subsidies and tax breaks. While its employees cannot even afford to put a roof over their children's heads. I did an interview last year uh, with a girl who is working alongside with the Fight for 15 in Buffalo, New York, a, a woman. She has a teenage daughter and she works full time. She cannot afford an, apart an apartment. She has to live with two other friends. That's how little she's being paid. Uh, on top of it, because the education is, uh, system is so bad where she lives, she sends her daughter, uh, she luckily has friends in a different neighborhood, her daughter takes three buses to bus to a different school. So she leaves first thing in the morning, her daughter leaves first thing in the morning, and they don't see each other again till about seven or eight o'clock at night. So she's working all day, she does not see her daughter, and she's still not making enough to just put a roof over their head independently. Um, and that's happening with so many people in the United States. The report shows that our current system is anything but fair, rather it provides special treatment to America's biggest corporations and the richest families, leaving individual taxpayers and small businesses to pick up the tab. The $7.8 billion that the Walton family uh, received includes $70 million per year in economic development subsidies from state and legal governments eager to host Walmart in their cities. So uh, back to Walmart in 2015, Walmart's worth was $25 billion. The Walton family's net worth was $140 billion 
And as a result of the increase in the company stock prices, that, that equals more than the entire bottom 45% of American families. I don't know how many times I heard during uh, our last elections when Bernie would speak, the people who were trying to say Bernie was just uh, an old crazy <laughs> communist would say that we don't have a problem with income inequality in this country. So I would uh, argue that we definitely do. So just some quick facts at the end here about poverty in our, in our country. This is a, the Stanford Center of Poverty and Inequality. 20 facts about inequality that everyone should know. So these are just a few. Uh, wage inequality. Over the last 30 years, wage inequality in the United States has increased substantially with the overall level of inequality now approaching the extreme level that prevailed prior to the Great Depression. Homelessness. There are 750,000 Americans who are homeless on any given night, with one in five of them considered chronically homeless. The ranks of the sheltered homeless include disproportionate numbers of males, blacks, middle-aged people, uh, 31 to 50 years old, veterans, and disabled. We can't even take care of the people in our country. We can't even put a roof over our citizens' heads. And we have people like the Waltons and Jeff Bezos who don't pay taxes and on top of it get, uh, get tax subsidies from the country, which is actually taxpayers' dollars. So <laughs> they really have this system worked out well to provide for the rich and not for the people. Child poverty. In the United States, 21% of all children are in poverty, a poverty rate higher than what prevails in virtually all other rich nations. So there is a chart here and uh, we are one, two, three, four, five. We are, wow, child poverty. We are fifth as far as having the highest rate of child poverty out of all of these countries ranging from Denmark all the way to Israel and Mexico that we are fifth. That is a lot of countries and that is a lot of poverty considering we're supposed to be one of the most successful and richest countries in the world. Well, maybe we are one of the richest countries in the world, but it doesn't go to the civilians, to the people, to the working class. As I said, I would argue with anyone who thinks that we don't have a problem with income inequality, that we do. And um, I had a conversation with a group of people uh, last week who were Trump supporters uh, who happened to be related to me. And I try not to get into those conversations with family members because I have, and it seems like they don't listen and they won't budge. Um, but their argument was that people just don't work hard enough in this country. And if they are suffering from poverty, it's because they haven't worked hard enough. And that goes to show um, just how bad it is in our country and how much ignorance there is. And um, what causes that? I don't know. I don't know if these are just inherently uh, bad people or if it is the politicians and um, you know the media that leads people to believe that these are the facts when they're not. I mean, the propaganda against minorities, it's always out there. It's always out there. And it's so blatantly, it's just, it's a lie. It's a lie and it really, it's frightening that people believe it, but they do.